The Truth of Girls. Hi everyone. Well, I'd like to talk to you about something today that is um it's little known but it's very important, very serious, and I think you should all know about it. And uh, that is pandas. No, not the bears. Um, I'm talking about pediatric autoimmune neuropsychiatric disorder associated with strep. And uh, there is also PANS, which is pediatric autoimmune neuropsychiatric syndrome, and PITANS, pediatric infection triggered autoimmune neuropsychiatric disorders. Normally when a child gets an infection they produce antibodies, they overcome the infection. But in some children uh, an infection which could be strep or another viral or bacterial illness can trigger an autoimmune reaction which attacks the brain, in particular the basal ganglia which is involved in behavior and movement. So you have first exposure where you have this autoimmune reaction which could happen as early as 15 to 18 months and a lot of times this goes undetected the kid could be exposed to strep or some other thing and even be asymptomatic not have the the usual uh, strep throat symptoms and nobody really knows that they had it or maybe they did have it they may have even had antibiotics but this is when the autoimmune process is triggered and then what happens is that with every re-exposure, there's an exacerbation um, throughout their childhood. This tends to be episodic, as in it gets worse, and then, and then it seems to get better. It doesn't get sort of full-blown until later, and I'll tell you about that. And I'd like to add that the, what's noticeable or notable about this is that it happens right after the illness. And, and especially when it goes full blown, people can usually pinpoint when this happened, like it, it happens sometimes basically overnight. So some of the symptoms are personality changes, nightmares, anxiety, separation anxiety, really extreme separation anxiety, um, oppositional defiant behaviors, tantrums, I'm talking violent, totally irrational tantrums that seem to come out of nowhere and that can be very violent. Um, scripting, this is like making people repeat lines from movies or act things out or themselves repeating lines over and over or expressions. Perseveration, repeating the same word or words or phrases over and over and over. Fears, practicing rituals, autism-like symptoms, intrusive thoughts, tics, uh, cognitive deterioration, their ability to learn is effective, they don't, they don't seem to learn as well and also a regression in behavior. Regression in behavior and their skills uh, decrease, especially you see a decrease in math uh, skills and also in writing and drawing. Eventually, with more re-exposures, this goes full blown and uh, they have very severe tantrums. Some people end up really thinking that their child is possessed because it just, it's just a really abrupt, sudden change in personality and sudden violent behavior that wasn't there before and they're like, what's happening to my child? And when it's full-blown, what you see, besides the tics, is uh, things like OCD, and this is a criteria that's uh, required for di diagnosis of, of pandas. Often enough, the OCD can involve anorexia. So what happens here is, uh, then there is a diagnosis. Well, hopefully, because otherwise, you know, they, they'll look at any, any one cluster of the symptoms, like anorexia, and they'll say, oh, well, she has a, a distorted body image, or it's because she's a teenager, or whatever. Uh, or they'll look at oppositional defiant symptoms, they'll say it's oppositional defiant disorder. They could label, mislabel them, really, or label them just according to their symptoms. Um, but l assuming that they get a diagnosis of PANDAS, it comes this way through a clinical, as in symptom assessment, and serological, as in blood tests. And then the treatment, unfortunately, it's usually psych meds. I like to say that the psych meds don't really work very well. Um, for example, in this book I have by Dr. Kenneth Bach, it's called uh, Healing the New Childhood Epidemics, the 4A Disorders, Asthma, Autism, ADHD, and Allergies. I was going to say, what was the last one? Allergies. Well, he talks about pandas in there, and he talks about psych meds like Risperdal, which are used, and he says, you know, maybe 30% or 33% will improve, 33% will have no effect, and 33% may get worse. So, unfortunately, with the psych meds, they don't work very well. And they're certainly not getting to the root cause, because as you see, it's biological. So, also, 
antibiotics to prevent reinfection, which will cause an exacerbation, steroids to decrease inflammation, um, herbs, some people treat it with herbs, and then there are non-steroidal anti-inflammatories, such as ibuprofen. Some people find that, well, this is a way you can test to see whether the behaviors are caused by inflammation. You give the child some ibuprofen. I'm not recommending it, not giving medical advice, I'm just saying what they do. Give ibuprofen, and if you see a decrease in the behavioral symptoms, then it could be because it's because of inflammation. Now, the, 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 the best treatment or the, the most successful treatment is IVIG intravenous immune globulin. And this has some really dramatic and amazing results. Uh, symptoms improve or even gone, and you even see improvement in uh, cognitive abilities and physical skills such as uh, drawing and writing and math skills. I mean, immediately after treatment, a lot of kids suddenly they draw like, like they had just you know grown by about five years. Also, another treatment some people are using. This is controversial, but some people like Carrie Rivera uh, insist that uh, MMS can successfully treat uh, this problem. Again, this is not medical advice. Now, here is uh, what's unfortunate. If the child is taken to the shrink and they're given a label of mental illness. But as you see, there are biological causes to this supposed mental illness. It's not just genetic or because their brain is wired differently. Um, yeah, there was an environmental trigger, but the trigger is an ongoing process causing inflammation and autoimmune response attacking the brain. So you can never solve the problem by medicating with psych meds, but maybe you can solve it by addressing the underlying biological process that's going on. Now, unfortunately, most doctors are not aware of this. They're not aware of pandas, uh, pans or pit hands or, or any of this. And so if you take your child to the doctor or the shrink, besides giving psych meds, as I said, they would attribute this to um, the parenting. Maybe you just, uh, you've raised a brat, uh, genetics, abuse. So you might look at this and say, well, this child is full of fears and anxiety. He must have been traumatized. And yet they haven't been. And another thing is, uh, well, maybe it's just their personality. So I wanted to bring this to your attention. I guess I'm going to go into this more in the future. Uh, but this is something that everybody should be aware of, of. And it's actually been making the news a little bit recently, whereas before nobody really knew about it. And, and I'm starting to think, looking at this and seeing how viral and bacterial illnesses can trigger this long term and, and apparently can even happen later in life. Although pandas, it's, it's uh, onset before puberty. But I've, I've heard of people having caught mental illness after a viral illness as adults. So uh, looking at this, I'm, I'm starting to think that, you know, really, maybe our understanding of mental illness has been very misguided and that a lot of what's called mental illness, well, what has mental illness symptoms is caused by underlying autoimmune reactions to things like viruses and bacteria and other things as well. But I think this is probably something that's been overlooked a lot. And a lot of children whose behavior suddenly changes uh, could have something like this going on. I'm starting to like have a real wake up call here, seeing how much this can affect a uh, mental state. So um, yeah, I just wanted to bring, you, bring this to your awareness and uh, leave in your comments if you have anything to say about that, or if you know anything about it. And I'll leave you some links also and some resources. And um, that's it. Thanks for listening to me, and I'll see you next time.